Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric and Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we will be reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 34 Day 2 B Block action. And it's this was good action. This, this was good action. Um It was A and B block. Huh? It was A and B block. Oh, it was A and B block today. It had to be. We saw everybody we saw the first day. Okay, my bad. I did not know that. It didn't seem like there was that many matches. The first day there was a lot. Okay the then. Amount. Really? Yeah. Okay. Now I just put it up there then. I just added it right there. A and B block then. I got to cover up the symbol a little bit. Not happy with that, but A. Okay. Um, I was looking at the screen and I never saw A or B block. It just, it never, I never saw that up there. You sure? Yeah, I mean, we watched the same amount of wrestling we watched the first day, and that was definitely A and B block. Okay. Huh, I got a page less. Okay. So, if we're wrong, everybody, we wrong, but I thought it was just B block action, because it's, it's not four hours, well, almost four hours, it's, it was just two. No, um, it was not. It was it, one and a half and one and a half. Crap. So everyone, this what this means is it was so good that that time flew by. Even though, you know, she went to sleep. Like, she just didn't care about wrestling no more. I was shut up. I'm not well. No, <laughs> you just lost your spirit. I'm going to come over there and get the, it back. Look, these things happen. You know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm just, I'm just going to clip this out, right? Uh, then I'm going to take off all that block stuff and I'm just gonna leave it up to the days and we just gonna do that all right we got to cover this so you know there we go and I'm moving you know whatever I'm, I'm moving it all over the screen moving it all over the screen on oh, it's okay okay let's let's talk about it let's talk about it so um we start off with Callum Newman versus Sonata and Sonata's first showing was more than lackluster. It was. Okay. But in this, this is a better... I, all I wrote was this is a better showing from, uh, from both in this match with Sonata getting the win with a DDT that he had to muscle Newman into. Yeah, Newman didn't want to go. You know, it, it was an opening match. There really wasn't much to it. Um, they did wrestle. They did some stuff. It looked good. Except for Newman's supposed finisher, I can't stand the only double foot stop, foot stomp finisher that looks good is the Warriors' way yep. by Low Key. If it ain't him, forget it. If you can't do it like him, don't do it. And if you do it like him and they kick out, then just retire from wrestling because you suck that much. But it's, it's not about the move being legit or nothing. It's just you don't do something that looks that awesome and then they just kick out unless. It's a title match. But like the Meteora where they got to be sitting up or Callum's move where the person had to be bent over near the turnbuckle so he can come off with a double foot stomp to the back. I just think that's if you're gonna, not good. Yeah, if you're going to come off like that to someone le uh, leaning over, the way the main event went, that was the better version of that. Quick, not waiting too long, got it done. Took advantage of the situation. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how that first match went. So at least Sonata got a victory and it was from a DDT, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. It's good to have multiple finishes in your, in your repertoire and to legitimize moves like that. If that's Sonata. He yep. can do no wrong. He can do no wrong. He can be wronged, but he can do no wrong. Exactly. So next we get Michael Bolton Oleg. Dude. What? <laughs> What? You just take all the sting out of, uh, out of him being a wrestler with that. You know that? How so? Michael Bolton. What? The, the 90s singer. Yeah, that's he menacing. He was all right. I ain't say he wasn't all right, but he's not menacing. I don't know any of his songs or anything, but he was all right. I mean, he, he made money. He had to do good. So, okay. Bolton Oleg versus Hinati. And... I can, look, just straight up high-end brawler-style matchup 
where neither gave an inch or any mercy. Highly entertaining from start to finish with Hinari winning with a fisherman suplex and pin. Mm-hmm. That, that's what he called that Streets of Rage. And I'm like, look, all right, Hinati, this is my only gripe with you. Stop it. Stop what? Okay. It's a fisherman suplex. Mm -hmm. And he named it Streets of Rage. Uh huh. No. What's wrong with that? Because nobody on the street would do that. All right. And Streets of Rage was an awesome video game. That had one of the best battle royal sequences in video game history. All right, so you know it's called Streets of Rage because he's walking around screaming about every damn thing. Okay, but I can't. I mean, you could just call it something else. You know, just it don't fit. If it's gonna be Streets of Rage, why couldn't it be some kind of mount position strikes? And the opponent has to give up, you know, something like that. He's not a mount opponent striker. He's a slammer. No, well, yeah. Hinati is a heavy striker. He's a power striker. And he's a power wrestler. And he's a brawler. I mean, he's he's got the heavy hitting package. He's got that. This is what you do. What? You call up Hinari and you say, hey, don't call the Streets of Rage. And then you decipher the, the, the guttural screams that come over the line. I, uh, I, I've got to work on my Hinati ease, but I can try. <laughs> I, can, I can try. So next we got Gabe Kidd versus Great Okan. Man. Okay. Listen. I'm going to go through my notes then talk about this. They do some wrestling in the ring, and then it spills to the outside where they fight in the seats with no ring out count. The announcer keeps saying, please get into the ring. It took forever, but a count does begin. They get into the ring for a few attacks and then back to the floor. Kid leads, them, leads these moments, and it's not worth it. Okan straps Kid in a slew of chairs and stands mightily over him. But then it kicks him free. As Cedra said, he should have left him there. Mm -hmm. After teasing a double count out to manually run to the ring, and to mutually run to the ring, and manually, uh, <laughs> on a 19 count, they start the pro wrestling then. The kid wins with a 180 reverse rebound lariat and pin, which looks freaking nice. It's, it's his version of the jawbreaker lariat. But... And I know he should not have won this match. He should not have won that match. It was it was that simple. They gotta they gotta start wrestling this, this dude's match. I am not a fan of this outside the ring Gabe kid stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not. If he stayed in the ring, no antics, no BS, and just do what he did when we was watching him as a young lion, I I would be really high on this guy. Because he, he looked like somebody that needed to win to eat that night. But now he's got to stand out and be different by not being different at all. Yep. So next we get Ren Narita versus El Fantasmo. And I had to note, giving this a chance with ELP. And uh, I am conflicted. So Ren worked the leg well nearly from the start. ELP was ailing and hobbling, selling beautifully. I wrote for selling very well, but it was beautiful, great selling. At one point, ELP had to make the choice to use Jado's weapon and risk the match, or, you know, just get some form of revenge because he's been he was getting messed up during the match, cheating and everything. Well, not. Uh, not cheating so much from Ren, but cheap antics. But he, but but ELP chose the path of the good guy. The crowd like all and. <laughs> but then, during all of that that I just talked about, during which his jacked up leg healed one hundred percent. Yeah, he did start walking around. He was all good. Walking, running, no issues at all. 
But eventually, Wren won with that two-handed face buster, and he pinned him with that. And at that moment, ELP was hobbling again. He couldn't even leave under his own power. I'm like, I don't... I, I mean, there's a difference between the BS antics in the ring and f- forgetting to sell. But they're both equally flawed. But I don't think that the fact that he forgot to sell his leg in this instance is a reason to be like, I ain't going to give you a chance no more. Because his wrestling is completely different. Aren't I supposed to believe this stuff? I know that. Don't they want me to believe in the product, believe in the wrestler, but believe he's in the moment? But he's also a dude, and dudes mess up. Yeah, but he doesn't stop messing up. I don't, like I said, I'm conflicted. I haven't made my mind up just... You know, he's he's these two these like these past two showings have been amazing compared to what I've seen of the past and recent in that ladder match crap he was in. So I uh, I'm trying, okay? I'm trying. He has to try with me. So next we get Jake Lee versus Evil. All right, so no bullet club love as Lee uses the wolf's son to poke evil in the eye, and, which is and, something evil would have done. And Dick. Yep. He, he, yeah. He caught Dick in the one eye. So Lee all but dominates the match. And suddenly the bell rings late into the contest. And I was like, see, that's the stuff I was talking about for the last one we did. But it was Dick Togo being a him. Yes. Lee evades evil, throwing him into the ref and... Dick fails to garrote him, and Evil gets caught with the weapon. No DQ. You see Evil with the, you see him with the garrote. They, that you know the ref saw him, and you see that Jake is ailing. It makes sense. DQ. That's how that would have been traditionally, you know. But the ref removes the item. Jake hits a damn good choke slam that Evil sold well with a good bounce. Mm-hmm. Um, damage from the poke to the eye. Lee covered him while holding his eyes for a two count. That looked good. That add believability a lot. It was already good, but then that just really umped it. Lee misses a corner boot kick and takes powder to the eyes just a half a second later, allowing Evil to hit him with the STO and pin for the win. Yep. It was it was an interesting match. The 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 evil antics were different. Yeah, than what we've seen at nauseum in the past, and you got to see more of what Jake Lee could do in comparison to the first night where it wasn't much of anything. And I, I had to know that I'll be honest, Evil doesn't have boring matches, and he sticks with pro wrestling, and that's what made you, that's what prompted you to say that the first time, because mm-hmm. uh, as you as you mentioned that uh, what a few years ago we watched the G One. Every, Every single match. match. The same cheat, the same way, at the same point, with the same people. It was... It, it was, was evil so trying tired. to find his cheat version. It was so tired and hackneyed. Like I said, just like Tai Chi with the darn ring bell in the, in the trunks over and over and over again for three years. till he got that go-home heat from everybody, wrestlers and fans alike. Yes. And that... Because I was tired of them. I was sick of them. And I didn't want them there. Mm-mm. And then it got to the point where... What happened? I just started... I thought it would just be a nice goof to say, he's going to change and we're going to love him. And it was like that same month, he started changing. You could see it. And I'm just like, what in the world? So... It was like, right before I really started liking him, CJ was just all the rave about him. I just... Ah. What? Are we lying? Hold up. All the rave about Tai Chi? Never. Never has all the rave and Tai Chi ever come from my lips or my mind in conjunction with each other. Okay. He got to neutral, Mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. You can uh uh-huh all you want. Yeah. And we catering to Zemo. I'm not catering Zemo. Zemo. I thought I would just tell the truth, but okay. It's not true. So you want me to do kayfabe from now on. You just hate Tai Chi, and that's just how we're going to... I said Tai Chi got the neutral. 
I don't consider or think about him anymore. We haven't watched a New Japan, so there's no reason for him to have any storage space in the old brain. Okay. So we'll move on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we got Yuya Wimura versus Hiroki Goto. Amazing match. And I must say, Yuya is the guy to watch, as well as this version of Hiroki. Yeah. They battled the old school ways and beat each other into a pulp. The fans wanted both to win, and we know that cannot happen. Honestly, I wanted both to win, but, hey, you know, you, you can't do that. You can both lose, <laughs> but you can't both win. <laughs> <laughs> the, the chips seemed down for Yuya, but he slowly battled back, and Hiroki counted everything. Eventually, Yuya landed the double overhook front suplex hold for the pin. I love that. That's a wicked front suplex hold. I love it. And it looked like someone decapitated that man. That's how it looked. I was like, I know he suplexed him, but it's like his head is just detached from his body. It was just the weird, the the camera angle. It'd be nice if I could show pictures of this, but New Japan, they, they will jack me up for this. I know, because I tried a few years ago. That also aided in that channel getting taken down. Ah. I reached out to them and talked to them, but they wouldn't talk to me. But when I posted something, though, they they found it. Yep. Especially that one jackwad. Are you allowed to have these things on New Japan? I'm like, man, don't do this. And it started. Mm-hmm. And it, Yep, I got five strikes on each content that I put up. That had a picture. <laughs> a still picture. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so next we get Shota Umino versus Shingo Takagi. So this was almost a one sided match with Shingo having his way with Shota most of the time. It was a damn near complete and total decimation. I don't even use that word anymore going on what it really means. Oh, that's right. It yeah, I try that. not to use it anymore. It's anymore. annihilation. Yes. Decimation means to take one in ten. That's what it means. So it's a one in ten piece of his ass. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so Shoulder had a few good hold spots, but they got stopped with short clotheslines or the pumping bombers, which commentary enjoys saying. Man. And seems to love the corner bombers. Corner bombers. Pumping bombers. Sliding bombers. It's awesome. <laughs> Shota, with his ailing back, survives Made in Japan. Shota fought and survived primarily on counters and reversals and that nearly, nearly equaled the match. Shingo stopped his fight cold. Okay, you saw it too? Stop it <laughs> cold! <laughs> I, yeah, he did. He... Uh, yeah. I'm like, dude. You know, allowing Shota to win a sullied elbow exchange. The match ends with an underhook DDT by Shota and Penn. Mm-hmm. And that, and I noted that they they call that the Death Rider, but for all we can observe, that is simply another name for the DDT. It, it, it's, it's the Death Rider and and the Paradigm Shift. They're all the same move, but different moves. But the names are interchangeable along with two different moves, right? Yeah, because I've seen them. I've seen both names with the same thing, and I'm like, I I just don't care. And it's a damn shame he's they they still reference Goon as this dude's mentor. He still got Shooter written across his ass because of what Goon called him three years ago. And I'm gonna tell you, Shota Umino is no shooter. If he if he can, he's not showing it. Shooter's got a certain style in that ring. You can see it. Takagi is so good that when he is not being good, it's obvious. So there you go. Uh Uh-huh. Now, I'll be honest with you. Shooters and those who are not, they can almost mimic the same things. But, um... Yeah, shoot shooters. They, they 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 can mess you up. Kurt Angle. Yeah, technically he's a shooter. I wouldn't call him a hooker, 
But he, he's certainly a shooter. You just had to ask for it. Huh? Come on, hooker. No, 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 no. It was funny. No. That was funny. We're not doing this. He did, though. This is what I work with, people. It I'm, is. I'm glad you people are hearing this. It's, it's what he works with. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And uh, Umino, you shouldn't have won that match. You should not have won that not match. Not by a damn sight. Not by any stretch of the imagination. You could see... You could see Takagi having just, oh, I'm just messing him up and having fun. Mm, talking to the crowd. Yes. <laughs> he was, I mean, he almost just did half match, half promo. Yeah. <laughs> he was having a good time. And I know, everyone knows Shota probably shouldn't even be in this, but I'm like, I can sense that he's like, at all costs, even if I lose every match, I've got to be in this G1. I you mean, know. it's a means of ga- gaining experience. And it, it is. You can use it to look back and be like, you know, this I could have done better here. What is different between me and Takagi? Yeah, because Takagi can go. He you can, can go. see it. Mm-hmm. You know, just uh. <laughs> next match. Um, they had basically a double main event. We got Zack Sabre Jr. versus Tetsuya Naito. And Zack starts by working ahead of Naito. Naito spends his time on antics that cause damage, such as throwing him into the railing outside the ring and stuff like that. Outside, Zack's arm was not working too well, and his young lion second popped it back in. We saw this done with Will Ospreay, and it was pulled the same way, so they're going to do this from now on. Oh, this hurts. It's out, it's out, or something, and then the guy's going to yank it forward, and then, ah, and and there you go. So you're going to see that quite often. I don't know if they got that from somewhere or not, but I'm going to tell you, I've seen shoulders pop back into place, and I've felt it myself. You're not going to get a quick yell and shaking it out. (laughs) That ain't going to happen. You got to be somebody that's so used to it, that it stings but even then it's almost like make you slump to your knees for a second so yeah um but naito he hit destino in an odd way zach hit his zach driver it just looks so damn wicked mm-hmm. um but after a series of pin attempts zach scores the pin with the deep european clutch and he had naito Uber pinned. If he you was stacked eat. up on his shoulders, it was it was wicked. His that shoulder blades down. Naito was fighting to get out. He couldn't escape if he had the lock pick. He <laughs> just, just won't gonna happen. And after the match, Zach snatches Naito's uh, belt and parades around with commentary cheering him on. Yeah, the the Brit, the comment. He's he's he he wants it brought brought home. He says he wants yep. it brought home. The IWGP World Belt, he, you know, and, and then Zach gets back to the ring and slides it back into Naito, who lays ailing while his opponent is announced as the winner. I was like, man, this is two for Naito. This is, you know, and as you said, he's starting off like Tanahashi's I'm, way. I'm a Tanahashi started at G1. Uh, we get to the main event. I, I question if this should have been over that match. I do too. It was a good match, but I question. But you know, we'll just have to see. So this is Yota Suji versus David Finley. So this is a long and really good pro wrestling match. Antics galore, all of that stuff. Uh, both were a mix of roughhouse and strikes, with David showing more of a power game, while. Yota showed more of a setup to a power game that often got stopped. Yota relied more on his match carrying style as a young lion that the veterans appeared to shy away from. I hope Yota does, um, I hope doesn't shy away as well because it severely aids in building matches and carrying them through. Yota's got, he's, he's got main event written on him but he's missing something 
I, I, I'm i like, he's missing something. There's something he's missing. Uh, Yoda hit a spear and commentary shouts, make the damn cover. Because mm-hmm. he hit it good. It was wonderful. And it wasn't one of those stupid flipping spears either. Nope. It was a Kitamura style spear. Ah, Kitamura. Because he went through him. Mm-hmm. Yota finished with a double jump, 180 double foot stomp onto the back of David, who was leaning over at the time. We mentioned that at the start. But it looked far better. Yep. And he gained the pinfall. One, two, three. And he closed the show. And he's like, look, I don't care what y'all say. Changing the guard and all this stuff don't matter. You can talk about Naito and the others, but the one that's going to be headlined in the main event is going to be me. And I like that. Yeah. I like that. But yeah, as, as as you had mentioned, it looked better. That looked better. Pop, leaning over, pop, 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 jump, stomp. And there was little hesitation. It wasn't like he was waiting there forever for the for the move to come. Yep. So, you know, hey, Christopher Daniels is the first I've ever seen do that double jump in the corner. And then that was followed up by Jacob Fatu and then a bunch of others. That's how, that's the order I've seen. So if anyone's seen it, Otherwise, let me know. All right. But that was that was the show. And we're going to get up out of here. Now, let's just something you want to say. Nope. We covered it. Okay, then. So that's going to do it. That's It's been Cedric Procedure for CR Wrestling Commentary on New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 31, 34, Day 2. And with that, we want you all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And with that, we'll see you next time.